Welcome to Car Scene Korea. I introduce newly released Genesis, Hyundai, and Gia cars. And I'm here today at Cosiety. This is just a rental place out for to showcase their Gia EV6 for the first time ever to the public. They have three lineups that's coming up with EV6 standard model as well as EV6 long range and EV6 GT line and on top of everything comes the EV6 GT. Of course, um, that's coming up in next year. However, we have a uh, pre-production model here up in the display, which I'll show you in a bit. This right here is EV6 GT Line in yacht blue exterior color. And this is like that very yacht blue that we would all think of when we hear that word yacht blue. The reason why I'm zooming in on the exterior here is I'll show you one by one, but they all have different exteriors. EV6 Standard, EV6 GT Line, and definitely EV6 GT. Um, some might say it's subtle, but the biggest difference that I see on a GT Line is that if you come down over here, the cladding here is actually body color matched to that of the whole EV6. That's something that everybody pointed out when we were going over the Ionic 5 because no matter what the trim you choose, the cladding on the Ionic 5 was a plastic of its own. If you go with the GT line, the body exterior, the cladding color is color matched to the car. By the way, I absolutely dig this yacht blue color. And come over this way, another difference is definitely to a front bumper. If you don't have the car right next to each other, you might not be able to tell. However, the front grille design is different all on EV6 standard, EV6 GT. And EV6 GT line here, they have the active grille shutter right in front of here, literally in the grille. So when it's shut down, it provides the best of the uh, less of the air drag and uh, resistance from the airflow. And coming down to that way, we see this design right here, which stretches out horizontally. However, which I'll show you in a bit, the EV6 GT has a vertical line right here. There is no cut outlet on the sides anymore. Seems like it's much more effective for an EV car to have the completely blocked front face so that there is no air going in and out of the car. Same thing for the back of the car here as well. And this wheel here, it looks quite familiar given that this is an EV car. We've seen this kind of design a lot. However, definitely it's much more sportier than that of the Ionic 5s. One, two, three, four, five wheel spokes. And when it comes to the wheels, the five spokes, they never get old, they're the best. Turn on the emergency light. The matrix pattern doesn't show up, but rather it blinks the whole thing, blinks as a whole. Let's hop in inside the GT line. The first impression, I immediately feel the difference of the seat material. It hugs me well, and immediately I can sense that it's very driver-centric and driver-focused. The layout here stays almost the same as that of uh, Ionic 5. To be honest, I've been saying this throughout a lot of today's video, but this is like the brother and sister car of Ionic 5, so pretty much a lot of things are really similar however one thing immediately notable and different is this wide cockpit the view with the 12.3 inch both left and right that shows the information about the car on the left and infotainment system on the right however the biggest difference is that it's actually slanted and angled like a, a wide panoramic display that's geared towards the driver so that being said coming down to this um, center console that's also the same case with this engine on and off button with this um, dial type gear selector first design ever i have seen it on gia and uh, it feels just um very direct and intuitive you know where the r and d and push of a button for the p feels on firm grip i like it all and right here is 
the wireless charging pad as well as you can we can see the 360 video as well as auto hold and parking assist or alarm and um, two cup holders right here everything is exactly where it needs to be and also there's a ventilated seats heated seats heated steering wheel and same thing again everything is towards the driver and over here we started seeing this with the latest Kia the last one I've seen is the with the Kia K8 where you can push it around here it turns into the AC and the heater where you can control the temperature and also right here it goes into the navigation where you can control the map nav and all other infotainment system that we have seen on other Hyundai and Kia cars right down here are the charging ports and outlets which is very very practical and right there i see a, a c type usb with ionic 5 it was just the all regular as usbs but that's a c type right there and also the material used here as i have been showing you throughout this is eco-friendly material that's been made out of upcycled and recycled this has that black theme uh, however, you can change that into the white display, which will turn just exactly like that of an Ionic 5. The other things stay the same with the gloss finish here and there and all the other self-explanatory buttons. But let's go check out the front. So the front is there for EV6 but just like how it was on Ionic 5, you cannot control it with the key fob. However, you have to open it just like the way you would open up a conventional trunk in ICE cars. And uh, this model being a four wheel drive, meaning there's a motor on the front as well. So the size of the front is here is minimal. Um, you can just simply stack something here like a pair of shoes. That's just pretty much it. But however, I really like the fact that they have installed that super bright LED up here as well. And same thing for the Ionic 5. There is a finish right here, as well as if there is a motor on the front, there is also this absorbent installed up on the hood. So it further reduces the noise coming into the cabin from the motor on the front. If you choose two wheel drive, you're gonna have much bigger front up on the front as well as no sound absorbent material in the hood so that way you, they maximize the space out of this EV6. Kia and Hyundai could have gone through the process of covering all this make it more like a clean and sleek look but I don't really see that's because of the cost saving method but rather I think they left it out for that practicality issue when it comes down to the maintenance. They could have easily done it if they wanted to because I've seen some other media criticizing for that. But however, as we go through the detail of the EV6 here, uh, Gia did not save a penny on this car in terms of the design and all. And also when we look into the EGMP platform, they have designed the front structure in a multi-way, split way, God forbid, but whenever there is a front collision accident, the car will try its best to divert the energy coming to the front and to the cabin. So there is a reinforcement here and there. So that's something to take away. And hopping in the second row seat of this EV6 GT line, I really like the design and the color theme that they have used here. Overall theme of EV6 is black interior. However, they have the, this white accent here and there that flows well with the front. All right, so this is not Alcantara, but it is a suede that feels quite luxurious. And that's quite similar to that of, uh, you know, Alcantara. This fabric material is really good with holding your butt and seat together from the second row seat what i want to emphasize here is the design of these new two seats right here it's shaped like this i can't even really describe it in words because we've never seen this design before however this focuses on practicality from bottom up from the second row seat not only does it provide much bigger and larger leg room on the second row seat, put your coat on here and then you can even have some hangers here that makes it even more extra practical. 
and over here just look at the sunroof they call it panoramic sunroof however this is not exactly the sunroof that we are aware of so this is somewhat like that of a panoramic sunroof however that's the only much of a space that we get this looks identical to that of the one that i have on my veloster n the difference here is the cladding the cladding here is not color matched to the car however this is finished in black and some of you guys also pointed out on ionic 5 video that it would have been much nicer if the finish was in black and here it is i'm seeing one in person on ev6 with the black cladding and i gotta say this looks much more fancier than that of the gray ones that we've been seeing and that is the matrix pattern that we see with the turn signals and come over here inside here is actually right here it's all empty so this is just a kind of a cover that's sitting here but if you come over here this is where the headlight is one up there one below probably most likely works as the high beam and low beam and come on to the back also the matrix pattern light on the rear that flows from that bottom up the rear quarter glass the rear quarter design of this car is no match not comparable whatsoever to that of ionic 5. again just push up a button it opens up the trunk and because of the design kia ev6 has to give up some of the trunk compartment space on the back but once again this is big enough it's humongous especially when you make a comparison to that of a sedan i think this is much more practical than that of a small size suv like kona and the best part about the ev6 trunk compartment is that there is actually a lever right here for the ionic 5 you actually had to go all the way around open up the second row seat door and for fold the seat using this lever here but and we all know what difference that makes when you have to come all the way around and open up a second row seat versus folding your seat from the back with just a push of a lever like that one on the left is the ev6 standard with the long range and one over there is a yacht blue with EV6 GT line. Again, I really dig that color. And whoa, I'm looking at it from a few steps away for the first time ever. God, look at that coupe like design, especially that quarter glass. And on the back here, it's all fully connected with the chrome molding. But when you come down here where their separation is, the finish here is a little different. Um, they have very tiny particles. Look at how concave this thing is. Again, I'm touching the car because this is a car for the showcase and the tester. So, so this part right here, reminiscent of Stinger. What do you guys think? It reminds me of the Stinger right away. That's connected all the way like that from left to right. You can also find the different design of the reverse light and as well as the design around the diffusers so coming over this way this is the standard model here the reverse light is just the one whole bar and also check out the rear diffuser as well this is the boss the boss is sitting all by herself in this private room and this ladies and gentlemen is ev6 gt and so unfortunately i don't have much time i only have a few minutes left so right here check out the difference in the front grille as well as the active grille shutter which is currently all shut however come take a look it's all vertical and so let's go over here as well for the rear show you what the rear diffuser is like as well as the reverse light check that out uh, vertical lines and also there is more design to the rear diffuser 
And over here, there is a vertical reflector, unlike the horizontal reflector, that of the GT line. So this is pre-production model, so we can't get inside of this car, but there are subtle yet few changes within the cabin of GT. Immediately noticeable is that GT button. Just imagine what that would do. And also this seat right here. I recognize it immediately because this is the identical seat that I have on my Veloster N and they call it N light bucket seat. So wonder what the name they would come up with this. But this is quite practical. So this is a semi bucket seat. There is an outlet for that racing belts harness as well as I really like the fact that they have engraved on um, GT right there for the Veloster and they actually have N logo right there which actually lights up. So I know exactly how this feels when you take a seat. The material they feel identical exactly the same and I doubt that this will have any uh, lower sitting position than that of a normal one because um, mine doesn't have it. So obviously there are lime accents throughout the car and again this car being a crazy GT you know the performance on this car, right? I'll show you the clip as well as the numbers right up there. So this car is meant to be driven. This, we can call it a sports car, that's for sure. So that being said, look at the front caliper that they have used, that neon caliper. And it uh, seems like Kia is still debating what to do with that caliper, what to write on top of that caliper right there. Probably either Kia or GT, but I have a feeling that they would put on like EV6 GT most likely all right a massive wheel a 21 inch and the funny thing is the smallest wheel you can get on ev6 is actually a 19 inch wheel all right once again the profile of the car it stretches out the design is connected all the way seamlessly like that with one single character line going across and it is just beautiful and so that's it for today with the Gia EV6 on the back. And thing is, if you have any questions after seeing today's video, leave in the comments because I'm actually heading over in a week again to capture the EV6 elsewhere. But then again, there will be more videos, so stay tuned. And there is um, the Hyundai Globus. They make um, OEM parts for Hyundai cars. So that was EV6, ladies and gentlemen. The gate has shut and I'm afraid time is over. All right, don't forget to subscribe and like the video and share the video and I'll see you on the next video.